Fans play it on. Young or old, clearly the fans come out the winners, getting to see this game for the first time in 35 years. I, I, I think this is great. I, you know, we've been waiting for this a long time. Look at the, the fans. Look how excited everybody is. It's good. It's fun. Oddly, though, it was hard to tell the Yankee fans from the extras in a movie being filmed right outside the stadium. Still, this game is a winner because New York would win. I'm a Yankee fan. I root for the Yankees. But if uh, the Mets win, then New York wins also. So this is a wonderful thing for New York City. Hmm. Wonder what this guy would have thought. But one did not have to be a native New Yorker to enjoy this. Francis McManus came from Waco, Texas. Everything is fascinating here for me. This is the first time I've been here. <laughs> so, so why not see the Yankees and Mets? Right, that's true. And for others, there simply aren't the proper words to describe the excitement. And at this hour, it's mostly the Mets fans who are doing a lot of that cheering. There are two more games in the series, and with the Mets having won the first one, you can imagine they are doing an awful lot of boasting tonight. Reporting live from Yankee Stadium, Tim Fleischer, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. ...of their kids, they say they are being forced to... ...subway series. Boy, 40 years in the coming. But New York has a subway series again. And tonight, surprise, Mets rule, and George Steinbrenner was nowhere to be found. We take you to Yankee Stadium. They packed the place tonight. It had the mayor beaming. Plus, Andy's headed for summer again, too. This will be fun. Everybody will scream and shout and dance the night away. They all came out. Even the dancer was that You know it was special. Andy Pettit took the mound for the Yanks, and the Mets got to him early. John Olerud would have a big night, knocking in three runs. Bernard Gilkey put the Mets on the board. Later, after Butch Husky singled home a run, Andy Pettit had him picked off at first. But Todd Hundley was at third, ready to make a break to the plate. When he did, Pettit threw home, but Hundley beat the tag. Mets up 3-0. The Yankee fan is on the left. This is a classic hook slide by Todd Hundley, raising the foot just over Girard. He's leg pretty as a picture. Meanwhile, there was Dave Malicki. Right from the get-go, he had a curveball that froze the Yanks in their tracks. Cecil Fielder was a two-time strikeout victim. Son of a gun. All right, ninth inning. Check out the Mets fans. On their feet, they had taken over the stadium. Dave Malecki, pitching the 279th game of his career, finished off Derek Jeter to complete his first ever career shutout. Mets win 6 nothing. Mark Stevens is live with Yankee Stadium with the game's hero. His Mark. first time ever in Yankee Stadium, Scott. First time pitching, fair to say. Biggest stage you've ever been on, biggest night of your career? Yeah, I mean, they say uh, New York's the place, right? So, uh, yeah, it was a great feeling out there today. What was the whole thing like? The hype before game, the fans during the game? Uh, yeah, the fans. Fans are unbelievable. You know, Yankee fans are great, but you have to give Met fans a lot of credit. You know, they, I didn't think they'd be out that, you know, as much as they were, but uh, it's great to see them. Is it fair to call this like a playoff game to you guys? Never been there, so I can't tell you. Uh, but yeah, you know, the atmosphere and the excitement. Um, you know, we've been looking forward to this, and, uh, you know, what better way to do it? Congratulations, Dave Malicki, the biggest night of his career. First shutout with the win. The Mets have exactly the same record now as the Yankees. They'll break it here tomorrow. For now, we are live in the Bronx. Mark Stevens, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Barely. You want to talk playoffs? Go ahead. Equal opportunity hatred of the Cowboys and the Yankee foe, the Indians at the Meadowlands. Dave Brown's pulled chest muscle didn't hold up. Lasted less than a half, but the crowd didn't mind. Standing ovation for Danny Cannell when he entered the game. And he sparked a stagnant offense here to Kevin Alexander. That led to a field goal, and congrats to the kid in relief. Giants within 6-3 at the half. It was the Giants' defense, though, that did it to Troy Aikman today. Less than a minute to go in the third. Aikman's pass. Picked off by Tito Wooten, and he's gone. 61 yards, his first of two interceptions, the first TD of the game. The big blue up 13-9 on Barry's boys. Now, a questionable interference call put the Giants in business for their second visit to the end zone. It's Charlie Way. With six minutes to go, they were up 20-9, but Aikman wasn't done. Two minutes left for Anthony Miller here. This Plus a two-point conversion, they're within three. Final seconds now. Cowboys, no timeouts. To Eric Bjornsson. He gets him within the tying field goal range, but the Cowboys didn't get to the line of scrimmage in time. Aikman spiked it in time, but his line wasn't set. The game ends on an offensive penalty. 2017, Giants get away with a great big win. I'm very, very proud of this football team. They still try to figure out a way to do something, give it back to them in that fourth, but 
like they said, they said, Coach, we weren't going to give it back to him. Well, some of the calls that were made and some of the balls, you know, like the, the one right there where David Patton dropped in and bounced up right back to us, and we, we recovered it. Um, you have to have some things go your way, and that definitely happened today. Now the green guys, and any time we can... The last time the Red Storm made a Final Four appearance was 1985. It also happened to be Bill Weddington and Chris Mullins' senior year. Coincidence? Maybe. But Felipe Lopez and Zendon Hamilton sure hope it wasn't. You know, those guys have been through some great battles in the Big East, and I hope that the freshmen can use them as a resource uh, for uh, what kind of experience they're about to undergo this, uh, coming, you know, this coming next couple months. A lot is riding on the shoulders of Hamilton and Lopez. How did this one of the best one-two combinations in the country? They have yet to live up to their top billing. Oh, we just trying to go out on a good note. We're trying to leave school with a good note. You know, we came in on a good note, and we kind of broke it down a little bit, and we want to leave on a good note. Maybe it was the Sports Illustrated coveraging, or being compared to Michael Jordan before even touching a ball at the collegiate level. Whatever the reason, Felipe Lopez has spent the last three years convincing the critics that his talent is more than just height. Zendon <laughs> Hamilton entered St. John's the same year as Lopez. And like his best friend and roommate, he was a McDonald's All-American. But not as highly touted. And ironically, where Lopez has disappointed, Hamilton has surprised. All that statistics, and we, we found out that doesn't mean anything unless we don't win. So we're just trying to get as many wins as possible. And I think with the guidance of um, Coach Fran Fischello, I think we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen. No go. Two great stars in college basketball in 1990s. Fox begins at 8 p.m. with primetime top. It's coming right now. I'm looking at it. <laughs> All right, double dipped them. I, I knew there were two there, and I they double dipped them. There was a reason. They got a water and a Gatorade. Jim Fossil. That's well deserved. Could be coach of the year. Well, people picked him to finish last, and they only finished first in their division. Brad Maynard with the kick to Brian Mitchell, returning from the 18-yard line with under a half a minute to go. Flags are down, and that's going to be on Leomon Evans and Jesse Armstead. Armstead ran right by Leomon Evans, got pushed in the back. Today's game was produced by Richard Zients and directed by Artie Kepner. Our technical producer is Rich Vasili. Our associate producer is Larry Lancaster, and our broadcast associates are Greg Scopatoni and Jacob Ullman. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown, and the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. And thanks to Chris Visser and Dave Corris up here in the booth. As uh, Rodney Hampton got back in the clinching game for the Giants, came back at the right time. Jim Fossil will be the first Giant rookie head coach to win a division since Ali Sherman back in 1961. You know, you play this game for a lot of reasons. But the biggest reason you play this game is for this feeling right now. It's to win. And there's nothing that replaces winning. Redskins are still alive. Keep that in mind. They'll need help, though, to make the playoffs. Jeff Hostetler pass out of the backfield to Brian Mitchell. And that may be the last play of the game. Record crowd sees the Giants clinch today. Jim Fossil already has his division champs hat on. And they were anticipating that, and they got it. but congratulations. Uh, it's exciting. It's exciting for our fans with a, this bigger crowd. And, you know, they, they really get into it and help us today, and I, I can't tell you how proud I am of this football team. Did you ever dream in your wildest dreams that you would come in and be able to capture the NFC East crown so so quickly? Well, I, you know, I wanted to, and, and I know this team, they really wanted to, and, I, and that's what made it all happen for us. What would you tell the team when you go to the locker room? That we're not done playing yet this year. We've only, we've only 
gotten to where we wanted to and got us getting in the playoffs and we got all the work to do. How'd that Gatorade feel and the water? I'm sorry? How'd the Gatorade feel and the water? Cold, cold. It was cold. <laughs> it hit me pretty hard and knocked me forward. I got tripped. Uh-oh. Go take care of yourself. Let's go up to deck. All right, Pam. Thank you very much. And our energizer play of the game was the clincher, Jason Seahorn's interception and return, 35 yards for a touchdown to seal it. And a nice job of Seahorn of breaking on that thing. Again, Westbrook fell down, but then you still, you've got to take it back for six, and he does an outstanding job. And really, just at the tip of the iceberg of the kind of game that Seahorn played all game long. Final score, the Giants beat the Redskins 30 to 10 to win the NFC East. And we'll be back with the post-game show coming up in just a moment. For Matt Millen, Pam Oliver, Dick Stockton saying so long from Giant Stadium. NASDAQ post-game report coming right up. The East champs, seven years since the last one, one year since last year's last place finish. The Christmas wish by the record 77,500 fans, that division title, and it didn't take long to realize it was going to come through. First time Skins had it. Steven Davis running in place with the injured Terry Allen forgot the ball, and the Giants all pro Jesse Armstead all over it. That led to a field goal. Next time the Skins tried to punt it away. Never got that far. Matt Turk blows it. The Redskins were able to chase it down, but it's still the Giants' ball deep in Washington territory, and from there, it's Charlie Way, who should have made the Pro Bowl, shows why. 15-yard touchdown run, the Giants were up 10-0. Late in the first, Danny Cannell's turn, fires a strike. What? He just squeezed it in there to Chris Calloway. The TD had the Giants 17-0 after one, 20-3 at the half, and then things got real ugly in the third quarter. First, the Giants' defense let up a little bit, giving up the bomb. Old pal Jeff Hostetler. 41 yards to the rookie Albert Connell. It's 20 to 10, and it goes from ugly to hideous. Cannell's pass, intercepted by Stanley Richards. Next play, Hostetler's pass. Right back to him. Corey Widmer stole it. Then the drop is Brian Mitchell on the punt. Yeah, these two teams were playing for first place. Giants recovered that. Cannell then gave it right back. Another interception, another by Stanley Richards. But the last takeaway was the biggest takeaway. Haas. Intercepted by Jason Seahorn, the Skins' sixth turnover of the game, coming all the way back. 35-yard touchdown makes it 30 to 10 final. The new NFC East champ feel a page from the old one. Jim Fossil is a rookie coach, gets the old Gatorade shower, a double. He deserves it. And as Channel 7 Spencer Tillman reports, worst to first, who'd have thunk it? Jim Fossil. That's well deserved. It's been seven long years since the Giants claimed the top spot in the NFC East, and for one head coach, seven's a lucky number. Nobody expected us to get here. Had the Giants way down, but we're back, and that's, that's exciting. And yes, they were back in the wildest way. They give it, and they take it the way. Early and often, nine turnovers total. Fortunately for the Giants, the ball bounced their way more often than not. Well, the turnovers were pretty unbelievable. And, uh, you know, you come into a game and you don't expect them to come like that. A muffed punt, that's something that just doesn't happen in a big game. Yeah, our defense did an outstanding job. It's like they have all season long, you know, giving us an opportunity to put some plays, make some points, and they did a great job like they usually do. I've watched far too many people in the playoffs play. It's time for somebody else to watch us. So it's definitely nice. You know, after three years of, you know, not the, the best seasons in the world, it's nice to come out on top for a change. And so for the first time in a very long time, the season finale between the Giants and the Cowboys means absolutely nothing. You think the Giants are concerned about that? Forget about it. Reporting from the Meadowlands, I'm Spencer Tillman, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. So sorry for the Cowboys, don't you? It'll be a rough day for them. Four sacks in the game. Giants scored all the points that they needed to win in the opening period. Danny Cannell dropped back, looked downfield, hooked up with Chris Calloway, 21-yard touchdown, and it was 10-0 after the first period. Jerry Jones worked the sidelines. Is this the last time he'll see Barry Switzer there? Rodney Hampton ran his way into the Giants' record book. This touchdown gave him 49 as a Giant, and that breaks Joe Morris's record. It was 20-0 Giants at the half, and then they substituted. Dave Brown came in, fumbled on his first play, and that set up Dallas's only touchdown of the afternoon. On the Cowboys' sideline, Michael Irvin said it all. Dallas closed out the season with five straight losses. The Giants savored her win over the Cowboys. Kurt Menefee saw it all down in Big D. 
and put today's Giants victory in the General Motors Giants Spotlight. Yeah, the 20-7 win allowed the Giants to finish the season 10-5-1, but hey, this so-called meaningless game was about a lot more than just the score. It's good to send a message to them. Uh, you know, when they came to our stadium, they, they uh, ran the score up on us, and they let us know about it. And uh, I, think, I hope today that we let them send them a message, too. And they've handed it to us a few times the last couple of years, so it's nice to be on the upper hand of things. And this is the Cowboy team has been one that's talked a lot of smack to you guys all over the years when you weren't playing well. You know it. Oh, definitely. I mean, they were still talking today. You know, and that's what made it so sweet. They were still talking, and yet we were still putting it to them. We took it for, for um, how, how many years? Eight years, I think, since the guys have won. So we're extremely happy. And they've been getting to us so many years. They worked for 35 men on Monday night. Uh, we finally could give it back to them, and uh, we're just glad to uh, go in history. Thank you. Yes, taking care of business with Big D helped Big Blue get into the record book, becoming the first NFC East team ever to sweep through the division without a loss and finish at 7-0-1. So where'd you get that broom from, man? I saw you on the sideline working it. I got it from a giant fan in the first row. I told him, hey, if I get a chance, we sweep the NFC East. I'm breaking out the broom. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. When the record books, nobody else has done it, so when they look now to New York Giants. It's a great accomplishment for us. Uh, you got to give credit to the coaching staff and the team because we pulled together when everybody, when the chips were down, and we did a great job. Be able to go through the NFC East, win the division, and not have a loss, be undefeated, and when nobody's done that, um, that's quite an accomplishment. With team goals taken care of, the Giants were able to give Rodney Hampton a team record. He scored his 49th career rushing touchdown, topping Joe Morris's 48. Did you know coming to the game you needed one more in, in the situation? Well, I knew that for a year now. <laughs> <laughs> but when we got to the one-yard line, I was telling them to run it right up the middle of the uh, They called the third AG or run to the outside. Oh, and I'm like, what y'all doing? And then Charles Way said, just follow me. And, you know, and a guy like that tell you that, you know, it's going to be wide open. And, and that's one of the easiest touchdowns that I had throughout my career. And so with Hampton and the team in the record books, it's time to close the book on the regular season and get ready for the playoffs. I think this is right where we need to be. You know, we're playing pretty strong. We came out with a good performance today. And, uh, you know, hopefully we're on the rise going into the playoffs. So we got to take it up to another level. And, hey, it's a new season now. And so the Giants get everything they want out of this game, including momentum going into, yes, a playoff contest next weekend at Giants Stadium. With the Giants in Dallas, Kurt Menefee for Sports Extra. And Kurt, the Giants playoff opponent on Saturday at 12.30 in the afternoon. Today, the Giants' Jim Fossil named the NFL's Coach of the Year. Not a bad trick for a rookie head coach. Coming right now, looking at it. <laughs> in the span of a single season, Jim Fossil took the Giants from worst to first in the NFC East. But along the way, he never thought coaching's top honor would be his. I did have wild dreams about winning the NFC East, about going to the playoffs, about doing all kinds of things that are special. I really honestly never thought one time that I'd ever be able to receive the Coach of the Year. For Fossil, the award was his early Christmas present. For the players, it's being home for the holidays, getting ready for a first-round playoff game here at Giants Stadium. It's definitely nice to be home. You know, I can't complain about that, and I won't. I don't really think it matters, uh, the playoffs. It's the same game, it's the same rules, same regulations, same field, everything's the same. Just now, if you lose, you go home. Saturday's game with the Vikings will be quarterback Danny Cannell's first taste of the postseason. Of course, he played in plenty of big games back in college at Florida State, and that experience should be a help. If you played in some big games, um, it helps you because big games are big games. And when you've been in a real big game and you've gone through that, then it obviously has to help you. Only a handful of the current Giants have even suited up for a single playoff game. And as the showdown with the Vikings gets closer, so does the pressure of winning or facing the end of the season. I've been nervous before the first two practices this week just because you, know, you want to get everything right. And I think it's just a matter of, of uh, going into Saturday, everyone knowing that we know what to do and, uh, and just going out there and playing, playing our hearts out uh, like we have all season. That they have. Giants and Vikings 1230 Saturday at the medal. Finally, it's taken nearly four years, a new coach, a new name, an influx of new young talent, but the class of Felipe Lopez may finally live up to some of their expectations this season, the senior season. Tonight, St. John's an eighth-ranked UConn down to defeat and gave Fran Priscilla his biggest win at St. John's yet. UConn's Khalid Almin went down with a leg injury in the first half. Before he did, he sent Colin Charles down, but paid the price. That's a charge. Oh, yeah. Here comes the storm. Through a close, sloppy first half, Zendon Hamilton got it done inside. He was 17. St. John's led 27-23 at the break. 
second half, here comes Felipe Lopez. Come fly with him. Lopez tuning up and turning on. I like how you do that. Later, Tariq Turner sets him up on the alley-oop. Lopez, 18 points to lead the Johnny. UConn still had a shot to tie in the final seconds. Ricky Moore will miss from three. Rasha Mel Jones will convert for two, but the Huskies needed three. That's not going to do it. St. John's holds on 64-62 over Connecticut. They start making foul shots. They could do some real damage. Earlier today at the Garden, the Knicks did what they usually do on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, win a basketball game. St. John's men's basketball team has endured its hardships throughout the 90s. The lofty expectations of Felipe Lopez and Ben Don Hamilton, along with the intense scrutiny of New York, seemed too much for this once proud program. But Coach Brent Fraschilla has turned around the Red Storm. Lopez and Hamilton developed into the stars experts once predicted. And now the program is back amongst the elite in the Big East. Headed to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1992-93. And favorably, the talk of New York. Now, we know we have great opportunity every single night. And when we do take our, our advantage of, of those opportunities, then we can go ahead and try to look to our future. But so right now, we just try to work hard, you know, every single night, just um, try to get better, and just, you know, give us a great opportunity, not just to 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 be a doubt into people's head in order for us to get to NCAA, but just to be sure that we're going to get there. And with the Red Storm having won 12 of the last 13 games, St. John's has posted their first 21 season since the 1990-91 season. Well, it's been a fun uh, ride for us this year. We've uh, we hit some, hard, uh, some bumps in the road, but... Uh, this team has continued to work hard and practice and in the games and has made themselves into a, a good, solid team. I'm proud of them. We're a blue-collar team. Uh, we play good defense. Um, I'm, I'm very satisfied with what the kids have done. While well on pace for a bid to the big dance, the success of the 1997-98 season has had a special meaning to the Red Storm seniors. Me and personal role, it's been a long, hard for three years. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just glad it's turned out to be a successful year for us in the end. Well, I'm very happy for Felipe Zenden and Tyreek. Uh, as seniors, they've been through a lot here at St. John's, and I'm glad that they're going to be able to look back on their time at St. John's and know that they've helped us uh, get back on track. With the regular season coming to an end, the Johnnies are looking forward to the upcoming Big East Tournament. However, they have their sights set on a higher goal. I'm excited about what we've done this year, but hopefully it's just the beginning. And the key for us to compete is to compete for uh, postseason opportunities every single year. Making a tournament is going to be great. It, it, hopefully we do, you know, and, and, and just going our, you know, that, you know, we accomplished something here before we left. And tonight... Boy, long day, long... <laughs> this was one for the Mets books. It was the earliest, the warmest, and the longest Mets opener ever. And in the end, you couldn't find a better one. As has been said many times, it was a beautiful day for baseball on this March 31st. Game time temperature, 82 degrees. Ooh. Billy's ace, Kurt Schilling, started hot and stayed that way. Schilling picked eight innings of two-hit shutout ball. He struck out nine Mets. Bobby Jones countered with four-hit shutout ball through six. He did his job, as did the relief corps of the Mets. And then there was defense. Here in the name of Ray Ordonia, just like he ever was. Sparkling in the field. Longest scoreless opening day game in National League history went to 14. There, Ricky Patelico loaded the bases for Alberto Castillo. He delivered a two-out game-winning single to give the Mets the victory. one nothing in 14. Well, I told Randy Nimmo, uh, uh, bullpen pitching call, whatever it is, and uh, that I told him, if I go down there, I'm going to get it done. So, and obviously, I got a hit, and we got out of here. You know, we had a big crowd here. They saw a lot of baseball. Saw us make a lot of plays, a lot of really good plays, saw us pitch really well, and saw us win it at the end. They think they could be happy about that. I am. All right, to the board. Still at Yankee Stadium, still of great concern. Nearly 41,000 fans. Yanks jumped on the Angels. Started Ken Hill in the first inning. Paul O'Neill with a base hit to score Chuck Knobloch, and it was one nothing. Two batters later, Tino Martinez went deep to right center. Just missed the home run. He wound up with a double scoring O'Neill. It was 2 nothing Yankees. Two outs, bottom of the third. Tino ripped a double to right field. O'Neill scored to make it 3-0. Martinez went two for four with two runs batted in. In the Yanks' fourth, O'Neill stroked his third hit. Should have been an opposite field single. Garrett Anderson played it into a triple, scoring a run. O'Neill went three for four. Two runs scored and two runs batted in. 
Omar Oliver is in relief for the Angels in the fifth. Daryl Strawberry kissed that baby goodbye. Straw's fourth zinger, 6-0 Yanks. Daryl holds the all-time record for home runs at Chase Stadium with 127. They started to raise the home run apple in right center, but whoops, Daryl's a Yankee, not a Mets. David Wells allowed only four hits over eight in the third. He struck out eight, walked one, three of the hits, total homers. Gary DiTarsina in the ninth inning cut the Yanks lead to 6-3. After Wells walked the next batter, Joe Torrey came out to give him the hook. Wells wanted a complete game. Jeff Nelson came on in relief. Former Yankee Cecil Fielder popped out for the final out. Yanks won 6-3. Wells gets the win. Nelson the save. Yankee Stadium still unsafe for fans, so the Bombers travel to Detroit to start a three-game set with the Tigers on Friday. Happy. Did it feel like a home game? Well, it did, yeah. We had the white uniforms on, and we, we took the field first. You know, it, really, the, the field didn't play in anything in, in your mind. Once the game starts, and the fans, I mean, the fans made us feel like home. After the Yankees and Angels left Shea Stadium, the Mets and Cubs moved in, and they were separate paid admission. 16000 for the nightcap. Here's one of the funniest signs of the year. Greetings from a Mets fan <laughs> to the Yankees. <laughs> Second inning, no score. Steve Trashel's first pitch to Mets starter Rick Reed. A two-run shot, his second Major League homer. Mets up 2-0. Reed pitched seven shutout innings for his first win of the year. Reed got some help from his defense, first and second to Chicago in the fifth. Trashel laid down the bunt, catcher Tim Spear. Came up throwing to Matt Franco to get the fourth at third. In the seventh inning, former Met Lance Johnson pops one up. Check out Edgardo Alfonso going over near the stand to make the catch. Johnny Boy Franco picked the perfect ninth for his third save. Messi's won their fourth straight two to one. Trouble. Home court advantage now. Okay. Fran Fraschilla is out as basketball coach after two inspiring and successful seasons there. Actually, ESPN's Curry Kirk Pat reports the stunning development took place Friday when the school fired Fraschilla. Upset the coach had used his interest in jobs at Texas and Arizona State as <laughs> to renegotiate his contract. Priscilla had two years left on the deal. His record at St. John's was 35 and 24 in this past season. The Red Storm made the NCAA tournament for the first time since 93. Hired out of Manhattan, he was seen as the heir to Louis Karnasek's legacy, but apparently not anymore. Coming up, no day.